So today I thought I'd show you the next stage in my sample editing process. And it uses a tool called Signet. This is a command line tool. It's developed by Sam Windell of Frozen Plane. Uh, Frozen Plane is a sample library company. This is uh, Sam's company. So you can check that out. That's frozenplane.com. And this is a tool, well, as you can see, it's a command line program for editing audio files and assisting sample library development. I'll leave a link in the description where you can get this. It's uh, Sam's GitHub page. And you click Tags, click Downloads, and those are the available downloads there. So if we go down to the documentation, we open it up. You can see it has a lot of commands that are available, all these blue things you're seeing, those are all the commands that Signet has. And there's a, a few changes Sam made at my request. He added this fix pitch drift command, which is very useful. And I'll explain more about that in a moment. But as you can see, they're, they're nicely organized. So there's things for dealing with audio, file data, file paths, um, and a few other utilities. The three functions I mainly use are Auto-Tune, Fixed Pitch Drift, and Normalization. So the Auto-Tune is a pitch shifter. So let's say you've got a middle C sample and it's slightly out of tune, let's say it's 10 cents too high or something, the Auto-Tuner will tune it back down and it will pitch shift the entire sample by minus 10 cents to get it back to uh, where it should be. The Fixed Pitch Drift, on the other hand, is an Auto-Tuner but it works across the entire duration of the sample. So if the pitch is drifting out slightly through the sample, this will try and bring it back in line. And normalization is what you expect. It normalizes the sample to a specified uh, decibel value. I occasionally also use this uh, tune function as well. Uh, this is just a manual tuning. You just tell it how many cents you want it to adjust the sample by. Again, you can go to the link to, uh, to this, it's in the video description, and read about all the other commands. Uh, some of these file data ones are quite useful. The uh, conversion is good because it maintains metadata, which other converters don't always do. So if you've got loop points in your samples and you want to convert the sample rate, you won't lose those loop points. So the auto-tuner works uh, on a, a rate-based tuning, it's not FFT. And this is really good for samples in particular because it means you don't get artifacts created. It's basically like if you were to just slow down or speed up a recording. So that's um, how it operates. And it's a really transparent sort of um, auto-tuning which works really well for samples. And I'm not going to go too much into the details of what's available, but Sam has made it so that if you're tuning multi-mic samples, you can specify one of the samples um, so let's say the close mic samples to be like the master sample and all of the other samples from the other mic positions will take the same value of um, tuning that that master sample has taken. And that means that they all stay in sync, which is very important with uh, multi-mic samples. Uh, but I'm not going to go into it in this video. It's quite well documented here and you can read through that if you need to use that. Signet also has um, an undo feature. So you just write Signet undo, and it will undo the last command, which is good. And it w works by, it before it applies any changes, it makes a temporary backup, but it can only undo the last command. So uh, it can't like have two or three levels of undo. Okay, so let me show you how I use this. Uh, I actually have a script that I've written that um, runs these commands for me in a batch, but I'm just gonna do it manually here. So here's my oboe samples that we exported. All I've got here is the close mics and just the third dy dynamic. This is just for simplicity. And here I've got the staccatos. We've got three round robins. Again, it's just close mics and th uh, the third dynamic. So we'll start by tuning all of these samples. So I open the command prompt, the terminal, and the commands are available. I just type signet and I can type help and it will give me all of the documentation. So it's all in there, which is really nice. I'm going to be using this command, uh, this option 
recursive, so it will go through both of these folders at once. So I'll write signet, and actually let's just cd up a directory level. So we're now in this directory, and we'll write signet, and the folder we want is samples, that's where I've got these two folders that we were just looking at. So I'll write samples, recursive, and I want to auto-tune them, and I'll hit enter. And let's just make that full screen. So now it's tuning all of the samples and it's giving us some feedback about what it's doing. It's saying which samples it's uh, affecting and what pitch drift it's detected and how it's going to shift it. So currently it's just doing the analysis. And then once it's done that for all the samples, and we've got a lot here because we've got the Staccato uh, round robins as well. After it's done the analysis, it will apply the changes. So there we can see it's backed up the files and it's overridden the original file and then it's saying success. So it's doing that for each one. And if we wanted to undo that, we could write signet undo and it would undo all of those changes. Okay, so that fixed any pitch drift across the whole sample. So if the entire sample was out of tune, it shifted the whole sample up or down. But now we want to fix any pitch drift throughout the samples but just for the sustained samples, because the staccatos are really short, we don't have to worry too much about pitch drift in those samples. But in the sustains, we want to make sure that throughout the duration of the sample, the pitch is fairly consistent. So we're going to write signet, and then we're going to give it the fold we want, and this time it's going to be the samples folder and then the sustain folder. And the command is fix pitch drift. And actually this is a command, so I don't need to have the two uh, dashes there. And one thing, uh, there's a couple of options for this function, but one I always use is this one, which is chunk milliseconds, which is uh, basically it's analyzing the, the each audio file in chunks. Uh, so it'll analyze 80 milliseconds, let's say, and then it'll analyze the second 80 milliseconds and the third 80 milliseconds, and it'll do it in chunks. And sometimes I think the default actually is uh, 60 milliseconds if you don't have this option. But sometimes I find it can uh, create wobbly effects if it's too short, but it depends on the samples. And so I like to default to 80. Sometimes I'll increase that. I think the maximum you can go to is 200. And now we'll hit enter. So now it's doing the same thing it did before, but just for the sustains here. And we can just go up and have a look at the output here. So it's reading the file, correcting the pitch drift. And you see it says found a region for pitch drift correction. And uh, it says this will be smoothly tuned towards uh, that frequency. And this region roughly drifts blah, 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 by that many cents. And uh, now it's saying it's found another region and so on and so on. So that's all the analysis. And then it applies the changes. Okay, and then the last thing I do is I want to normalize the samples. So I'm going to write signet. We'll give it the folder. This time it's going to be uh, the entire samples folder because we're going to apply it to the staccato and the sustain. So that'll be recursive. So it applies it to both of those folders. The command is normalize. So we write norm. We want to normalize it to minus 3 dB. And we want each sample to be normalized independently. So I write this command dash dash independently, uh, this option dash dash independently. And that just means each sample is normalized independently. If you don't have that, then they'll be normalized as a group. So it will look at all of the samples and um, find the maximum volume or whatever the volume shift is to get them to minus 3 dB across all of them. Okay, so we'll hit enter on that. And we're done. Now the next thing I'd do is I'd take the sustains and I'd loop them. And while I was looping them, I'll check for any mistakes to see if uh, Signet has introduced any um, weird artifacts or if there was any other artifacts in the export from Arda. And then I'd also do the same thing 
with the staccatos. I won't loop them, but I'll, I'll just check through them in Audacity just to make sure that um, they've exported OK as well. But that's for another video. So I hope you found this interesting. Go to the Signet website and uh, check it out. Links in the video description. Uh, those commands I use, there are more options available for them. I just gave you a very quick sort of overview and um, the options I use most often. Sam is uh, continually adding stuff to Signet and he is uh, willing to take suggestions, or at least he's been willing to take my suggestions and implement extra uh, features and options, which is uh, really nice. So I hope you found this helpful. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll post them in the GitHub issues if they're going to be directed at Sam. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.